Hello, everybody. Welcome to Movies by McManus, the podcast where we break down movies, comics, TV, books, whatever type of media you're into, in the context of who created it and what effect it's trying to have on the world. And I'm your host, Greg. I'm joined with my brother, Mike. Yo. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Batman White Knight, um, the 2017 comic series, uh, limited series written by Sean Murphy. Uh, this is uh, this is the first really like main continuity uh, comic that we're doing on this show, like the first one that covers like a major character and. I kind of wanted to stay away from, like, major well-known characters just because, like, in their main comic series, there's not a lot you can do with them, and there's not a lot of, like, discussion. Like, the character of Batman, we know who he is. He goes out at night, and he stops criminals. And why I wanted to do Batman White Knight is because you are seeing him as a totally different person than you would normally see him in in all the movies or all the comics. Uh, in this one, he he is not seen as this unambiguous force for good like he normally is. And the Joker is not seen as this unambiguous uh, force for evil uh, as we normally see him. And I always felt that that is a very good analogy for law enforcement and for criminals because while in media you always see law enforcement unambiguous force for good and criminals are un uh unambiguously a force for evil By in media, real life in like movies and, and in stuff, movies yeah. and such and tv in real life it is not that black and white and it, and it is not that clear and the, this comic series was kind of, uh, it was marketed as the, the Joker goes sane. Uh, it, it says it in the back of the comic. And uh, when I first heard of the story, this is why I wanted to buy it. Because everyone was like, it's, it's a comic book series where uh, you're going to see the Joker be like a functional member of society. And he's not going to be this insane person. And I thought that was very interesting, and I think that's why a lot of people read this. So I did not realize that there was so much uh, to say about kind of policing in America um, in this comic series. That was kind of a surprise for me. Uh, I think Sean Murphy kind of, he knew that, and he knew that kind of to draw people in, he wanted to have this twist of like, we're going to see the Joker as a sane person as a way to then talk about police reform. I mean, in a, in a sense, like, is that kind of where they got the premise for the Joker movie on? Uh, just, I'm just in terms I'm of not he- sure, but if you're talking about the Joker movie, then it, yeah, he's he's portrayed in a very different light in I that mean, movie. He's he's humanized a little yes. bit from the you know mental health side of things. They're obviously still portraying him as you know a killer and a vicious person. Uh, uh, yeah, a killer and a vicious person, but not uh, unambiguously evil. Correct. And you you look at Joker throughout the years, and really with like Batman specifically, you look at his villains as just pure evil psychopaths who cannot be reformed. And in in reality, that's not the case. So uh, the this comic kind of deals a lot with policing in America and how community based policing is really a better option that will lead to crime being reduced because historically stripping away the rights of people who commit crime or uh, increasing law enforcement in certain areas or police being allowed to be rougher with criminals does not cause a drop in crime. Investing in things like uh, education, or investing in communities, putting money directly in communities, creating jobs in a community, those are things that create crime. And you look at criminals, you, you look at criminals, and I mean, we talk on this channel a lot about the reason why people commit crimes. If you're talking about economics, it's 
economic and social issues. If you want to talk about, you know, we talk about organized crime a, a lot, why, why kind of different ethnic groups stick together and create organized crime. And a lot of it is social issues. A lot of it is a way of kind of rising up economically. Uh, we talked in our video on Atlanta kind of about uh, they're in a situation where they view it as crime is their only viable option I'm reminded of survival. Of a, I'm reminded of a great Rock Marciano line from uh, the song Rough Town. He says, I'm dangerous, to, I'm dangerous at my brokest. Yeah, exactly. And uh, they, this sees the Joker. It, it starts off with, the, you know, Batman brutally beating him to a pulp and basically force feeds him as not a way of helping him, just a way of torturing him. These like experimental drugs that like are claimed of treating his psychosis and it ends up working. And the Joker, like he he stops being insane and he becomes like a real like functioning member of society. Uh, he sues the Gotham Police Department. He ends up running and winning for city council in, in Gotham. And he's still kind of like a morally ambiguous character. Like, he does things as a politician that are, like, uh, not the most moral things. So you see, like, he's still not a great person, but he's not the vicious psychopath that people portray him as. And if you look at just, like, vigilantes in general in media... It's always justified that they're allowed to be so brutal for criminals because criminals are beyond reform. And in my breakdown, I talk about um, 1966 Miranda versus the state of Arizona when Ernesto Miranda confesses to raping a woman, but the police did not tell them, tell him that he had legal right to talk to a lawyer first. And it created the Miranda rights, which... Ultimately, uh, you know, there's no doubt about it that it's a force that it, that it was a good thing that the Miranda rights are here. Yeah. That it's clearly stated what you're like. They still get are. around that shit though. They still and, like inter interrogate people and make it. You know, like when you're in interrogation, you don't have to say shit. Yes, but and it's it's also worth noting that like in 2010 there was another court appearance that there was another supreme court decision that basically got rid of the miranda rights that basically stated that everybody that it's become common knowledge that you have the right to remain silent and the right to attorney so if you say something incriminating before they read you those rights then it still counts against you so you talk about the Miranda rights. They're basically not on the books anymore. I mean, police still need to read that to you if you're arrested, but it doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, well, what do you mean? I mean, if they say if you say something after that's been read if, to you, if you say something before. Oh. that's been read to you that can still count against you yeah. before 2010 anything you said before you read your miranda oh, okay. rights could okay. not be used against you in I court you be backwards, because the police have not informed you of your rights yet right. um but the problem that a lot of americans saw with the miranda rights was that ernesto man uh uh, Ernesto Miranda was guilty and he was tried again and he was found guilty again because there are eyewitnesses but people kind of saw this as the US government being like soft on crime and being soft on criminals and it's the late 60s and really into the 70s and into the 80s that you have this like renegade cop um, the, this renegade cop like most most famous is Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, uh, right. where I don't know if you've seen Dirty Harry or not. I just know it because it's it's Clint Eastwood is this cop who just is horrible to criminals. And he's always clashing with people who are like, you got to, you know, people have rights. And he's like, these these savages don't have any rights. And I just watched uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and the main cop in that is like the same. Is the same, same thing, way, yeah. or he just doesn't. And, but in in Dirty Harry, it's like that's the only way to stop these people because criminals are so savage and they're so heartless and they'll do whatever that 
the only solution is for cops to just not obey the law. Which is the most ridiculous thing ever, but it's that's a can what was of worms and that's a it's a can of worms and a half. That's what was the sentiment in a lot of these films in the seventies. I mean, you know, everybody now it's almost like it's almost like a joke now of like he's a renegade cop who doesn't play by the rules. But those were the Shout movies. Out to Michael Dowd. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, seven Michael five. Dowd, 7-5. Yeah, a renegade cop who didn't buy, play by the rules because he sold drugs. Um, but that that's what people were going into the theaters to see in the 70s. And it, it, it led to, in kind of all media... Of just criminals are uh, criminals are criminals. That's all they're ever be. They're not human beings. And you look at Batman... Showed that too. In the late 70s and 80s, there was this comic book writer named Frank Miller. And Frank Miller, uh, he he made the heroes at their most violent and the criminals at their most savage. Uh, Some of his comics are like borderline fascist where he's saying like, no, this is the only solution. We can't let these people have rights. These people are savages. Uh, and this is what we need. We cannot. We do not need more investment in the community. We just need to be tough on crime, and we need to beat the shit out of criminals. And that just leads to more crime. You look yeah, at stop and frisk. Stop and frisk did not work. You know, and if vigilanteism in real life never works, you look at Bernie Getz who shoots who shoots five people on the subway also it's worth noting that like vigilanteism in comics is very different than like in real life yeah. because in real life like there's almost always like a racial I was aspect just gonna to say, it i was just gonna say that that there's yeah the bernie gets thing it was it was clearly racially yeah. motivated um and you and that kind of becomes like the cop genre throughout the years of like the main characters were the cops who didn't follow the I mean, rules how, and how, those were the people that you know were supposed to be making the real difference i don't know if i'm about to make like a conservative argument but like i wonder what effect that had on like people's psyche who went and became cops you know i mean yeah exactly like you're you grew up and all the cops you see in media, the the good cops who are the main characters, you know, d- like dirty. Ha- uh, well, the main characters were all the ones who no, broke the uh, rules. No, the uh, good cops who followed the rules got nothing done. That's what usually I'm got murdered by the criminals that's because they were like, let's let's have these people. Uh, you know, all the cops you're watching, Dirty Harry. You're watching Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon. Well, that's um, like so many of those like strong men characters. Like it's not necessarily has to be cops. Like it's like no. And this is a good time to bring up thing. the the documentary mm-hmm. because on this channel, whenever we do a comic or a book, I like to bring in a documentary that's kind of like a companion piece that kind of covers the same themes so the force it's a documentary it's on netflix from 2017 the same year that documentary excellent documentary the same year that batman white knight came out that covers a lot of the same themes where oakland police in the um it was 2014 to 2016 was trying to reform their uh department and you see a lot well, you of should, you should say so they they got taken over by, uh, yes. by the federal um government uh oversight i guess committee yeah. or i don't know what the name of the committee is but they they were having all these problems they were basically seen as one of the most like corrupt and brutal uh forces in the country um so the federal government basically stepped in and they entered a period of oversight where uh, this documentary takes us sort of like they're getting to the end of that period. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's just sort of, I mean, you could take it from there, but I, I just wanted to preface it with, with the idea that yeah. they, they 
they were taken over by the government because they were so corrupt. Because they were so corrupt, because they basically, it was, um, they they were given no other choice of like, you have to reform your poli- uh, police department. And you see, things seem to be getting better. And then you realize that a lot of the people in the police department uh, who were kind of trying to make progress, who seemed like good people, were actually a part of this major sex scandal where they were soliciting a teenage uh, girl for sex. And it it ends where you're like right back where you started, where where you started. Pretty much. And it kind of shows of just how difficult reforming the police really is. In Batman White Knight, they make it seem a lot more simplistic than that. Well, it, it's not reality. It's not reality. It's a comic book. It, they kind of end on the same conclusions, though, because this comic ends with, instead of having a police department, uh, and instead of having superheroes going around who have no accountability, a.k.a. renegade cops, uh, you now have a community-based police department where the people who are being policed have a much uh, bigger say in how they are being policed. They are considered kind of part of the police as well. Um, And it it ends with, you know, Batman. I I still don't understand that concept, though. No one has explained how that would work that I've seen. And granted, maybe I haven't, you know, done the the best job of seeking it out, Um, although I am obviously interested in, in the subject. But, like... I just don't understand in, what, what, in re- what is community police? In reality, I'm not sure how it would exactly, exactly work. Because it doesn't um, really make any sense. In in the comic, it's more like... Yeah. I mean, it, I'm more interested in real life. But yeah, I, I can, yeah. I in in the, the comic, the it's show. more like basically uh, all the lower level stuff would just be handled by like basically a neighborhood so watch. So that I so understand. Much. Like that's when they're talking about if you're responding to... which anybody should be able to understand this concept if you're responding to you know a situation that's not violent yes and i get that it's like well how do you know it's not violent well that's where you have to use some fucking judgment yeah you know and you know so having like a social worker respond to a a mental condition rather than someone who's gonna you know end up discharging a firearm yeah now what i'll say though is like something that would be useful for people to see because it's very easy to sit on twitter or sit on social media and be like oh defund the police you know oh why you know everything has to escalate to violence and then what what this documentary shows you is you actually see a lot of the police academy training and some of the videos where they're showing you a um a situation that can occur and you have to react it's you have like yeah very very small reaction time right like, like right. it's it's almost like it even changed my mind a little bit to where i'm like i don't want to be in that situation no where you're just no. like you have like like is this a violent thing is this you yeah know, is this person pulling a gun like sometimes you don't fucking have that long to decide and that's like really scary. No, you know? and it, it it is really scary, but it, it is something. Uh, I'm not talking about a George Floyd. Obviously. No, I'm obviously no. It, yeah, well, you know, no it, it's, one. It's not discounting. You know, if yeah. you know me personally, or you see any of my social media, I'm just fucking. You know, I'm on. Well, even the shit. most pro, even the most pro police people in the in the world. A look at George Floyd and agree that was a murder. I don't know, man. I, or, I think you're being a, a little um, or majority of human or majority of America sure, agrees but I, my, or my on the same is, page. I'm not saying that. like w- there's certain examples that are obviously egregious and obviously horrible, and there's some where it's borderline, and you're like, well, you know what? You still you have to figure out a way where that person doesn't end up dead. Yeah, exactly. And, you know. And I think kind of uh, just not uh, just reducing the amount of uh, times that are that police are sent to a situation, I think does help that sending a social worker instead of a cop does help because I I, I agree. It's a scary situation. You don't know that you have that body cam footage, dude, was like rough. Yeah. You know where you're like, and by the way, like in that documentary, you know, 
there's one example where, you know, there's this big vigil for this guy and they're like, oh, the police killed him. And then you watch the body cam footage and you're like, what you're describing is 100% yeah. not what happened. Yeah. Like, this dude was fucking, like, running, you know, and, like, had a weapon. And, like, they were just, they made it out like it was like this, oh, my God, the cop just shot him in the street. And it's like, that is not accurate. No, and I know. Know, I know what you mean is that, like, pe- people do... People to do run to judgment a lot. Sure. But like I say, you have to look at the context. You have to look of the history of everything of course. leading I'm up to that. I'm 100% on that, on that, that side. Is that you, you have to understand of, yes, when they say the, the police shot him in the street, uh, they're wrong. That's not what happens. But well, they uh, have a history. Technically, there's a, yes. All right. Well, right. Like technically, he was shot. He. Yeah. No. But, but the circumstances what I'm saying, they were describing. Were what I'm saying out. was the circumstances of he was an innocent person right. who the exactly. police just shot. That's not true. Exactly. But there's a long-standing history before that that led to that person believing that was true. Of course. And like, um, I'm forgetting her name now, but one of the community, I guess, organizers or activists who are, you know, it was the woman and, and the guy who were setting up the, like that community board uh, yeah. to kind of like air out a lot of these ideas. She, she just said like, policing has never worked for us, you know, yeah. meaning people of color. And yeah, of course. Like so, when you have that history, you're you're it's you know every it's it's hard to judge a situation uh, or a circumstance individually when it's like you you take the totality yeah. of the history has trended in this one direction. Well, I think that's a lot of when people talk defund the police or community policing. It's well, maybe that person wouldn't have been so agitated if someone besides a police officer was there. Maybe Dude, that person wouldn't have run if someone, bes- if there was a social worker besides a police officer. How there. many examples can I just think of? You know, I'm not, I'm not a person of color. You know, like the, the, I can't, I can't tell you how many instances I've had where I have an interaction with a police officer, and afterwards I'm fucking so angry. Yeah, it's like, why the fuck did you just come at me with? Like over here on this level. Yeah. Now, granted, you probably have PTSD because you probably saw a murder scene, or you probably, you know, whatever. But again, if it's a fucking traffic thing, yeah. You know, maybe you don't need to have you know Mr. Military fucking screaming yeah. at you. Is this helpful? You know what I mean? And so, then, uh, and now imagine you're in a situation where there's a dude dressed up as a bat who's going around at night beating the shit out of people. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to bring it back to we're talking about Batman right now, but well, the, I mean, we're know, talking the, about the police, not we're talking the, about everything, yeah, but uh, talking about Batman. Well, this is uh, this book is a clear criticism of how crime has been dealt with in media in the past right. of you see these real life situations of people who are shot, who we're in a situation where it did not have to have to end like that. And you see all really, I'm making the same conservative argument that you are, yeah. but all the media leading up to it of how, how criminals have been portrayed in, in comics like Batman in movies like dirty Harry or lethal weapon of complete savages who will pull a gun on you at any second. Right. You know, and the you know, I w- I watched all four Lethal Weapons not that long ago when we were in quarantine. I kind of watched all of them, That's and right. um, it those movies are so weird because there there's a weird liberal message in each of them, but at the same time they show police officers just like torturing and killing criminals. Like the the first Lethal Weapon is about. Like Mel Gibson and Donald Glover are literally trying to uncover a CIA plot to sell crack into the black community. Wow. Um, that's the plot of the first one. But at the same time, they're two cops who just will shoot anybody on sight. And then um, it, the third one was just like very like pro gun control. But at the same time, they were just mowing people down. Um, those, those movies are weird. They're like not trying to be, uh, 
there there are some movies like that that like i understand like you know shut off your brain and don't think about it too much exactly the dirty harry movies are different because the Dirty Harry movies are so... Well, I've only seen the first Dirty Harry. It's also Clint Eastwood. It's also Clint Eastwood. But it's Jackass. so it's so heavy-handed, which, like, this is the only solution. of the. We have violent thugs running around our community, and the only solution is we strip everybody's rights away and let cops do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. I mean, and there's people who think like that, you know? That's... You... You also, like, see, like, that's the type of movie that a lot of people grew up with. And that's yeah. and that's their portrayal of, of police officers. And that's their idea of this is how we get it done. I, I don't, you know, I understand the whole, like, you know, media, conservative argument that it's like, oh, it's media that's turning people violent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, like... You you can't deny that media has effect on the way people view the world. Well, it's also like, you know, you're taught as a kid to respect authority. Yes. You know, so it's like that's what unfortunately like really evil people will use that vulnerability that we sort of that most people innately have, which is you were raised to respect authority. So that's where yeah. you get like the Catholic church scandal or you get like police officers running amok because, you know, people just are, or, you know, the power dynamic between men and women sometimes yeah. where it's just like, not that men are authority, obviously, but you know, there's that fact that danger factor or whatever yeah. you want to call it, like where it's, you know, you're you're i'm not i'm i'm by the way i'm not saying that's right i'm saying like you know what i'm trying to say yeah where it's just like um i i get that and there is and so in in the 80s there was a movie called robocop you've obviously heard of it Paul Verhoeven is trying to satirize literally everything I was talking about. Basically, the Clint Eastwood renegade cop of creating a a movie. The first one is like this, at least, of like, you're supposed to realize that this is evil. It's literally like a mindless machine who's going around killing criminals who do not deserve it. And then for the sequels of RoboCop, Paul Verhoeven was kind of kicked out and they make him and they were just like, no, this guy is the hero. This mindless killing machine is the hero. So uh, there is like, if that's the movie that people want to see, if studios are like, no, people are going to like it more. If the, if the killing machine police officer is viewed as a hero, then uh you know then it it must have somehow then the clint eastwood movies before that must have affected the way that people thought well also there's like capitalism involved also in there's capitalism where it's like involved. all right that was successful let's take it yeah. on with it oh let's make him the hero because yeah you know but then again it's like dude people like dark fucked up heroes like we you know how many times do we talk about tony soprano i mean yeah no you know, that's a, that's a little more rene well, it's a little more renegade because he's not within the system of law enforcement. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, what can you say? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger never uh, – oh, well, kindergarten cop. But uh, I wouldn't put that in the same category. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Sean, Sean Murphy, um, he was more of like an uh, independent – comic writer and uh he was brought on to do this because uh dc black label that this this was the first series in basically the dc comics offshoot that was going to cover like more serious topics and like dc black label like they were going to allow to curse it was going to be like directed towards a older audience and sean murphy kind of his more independent stuff, he seemed like the perfect candidate to kind of start that off. He uh, he kind of became successful. He wrote this comic series called um, Punk Rock Jesus, where it was basically like Jesus Christ was cloned and he's in the modern day and he basically becomes like this punk rock anarchist. Um, so he, he's a guy that, you know, 
he he has left leaning thinking i would say right, right. so obviously when you're viewing batman who you know that's that's what batman is he's a renegade cop he he's someone who he he's on the side of law enforcement but he does not follow any of the same rules well truthfully he's like a little more moral than than even police right because doesn't he not he doesn't kill he people. he doesn't kill anybody yeah. um i mean yes in I the main think, comic uh, series which is also um what's important about this one it's is that there. it's not in batman's main continuity right. it's what's called an elseworlds comic yeah. meaning Just explain that a little bit an elseworlds comic means that it's characters that well-established characters, but it does not take place in that character's main continuity. Meaning their meaning their, their backstories their have been meaning their backstories have been different. Meaning that their uh, the dynamic between different characters can be different. Um, it, there's a there's a big thing with in, in this comic. It's kind of talking about how Batman has kind of been over the edge for a while he's been getting way more brutal with uh criminals and in the main batman comic book series one of the, one of his robins he's had multiple people play who are, have been robin one of his robins jason todd is murdered by the joker um in this one when joker becomes sane they ask him like did you murder jason todd because in this continuity no one knows what happened to him they assume the joker killed him but he's, but they don't know and uh and he's not sure because he's been crazy for long like a lot of his memories are messed up and then it's revealed like he ends up remembering he's like no i didn't kill jason todd I let him go. He just didn't want to come back to you because he sees that you're going down a path where you, you've been going around with zero accountability with no one, no consequences to you going out at night and brutally beating up criminals. And I don't want to be a part of that anymore. And in the, uh, this series ends with, Batman surrendering some of like his bat technology to the Gotham police, realizing that like everybody needs to be held accountable for their actions when there, there can't be people outside the law. Renegade cops cannot exist in real life. Dirty Harry needs some accountability for the fact that he's going into the streets and shooting people, you know? And that, that's really, that's really what the problem is is that for a lot of police officers, there are no repercussions for their actions. You know, going back to the documentary, though, one thing I was also really surprised with seeing is like, and I get that this could have been playing it up for the camera, I suppose, but the the protocol that they have to take, even if they do something relatively minor, like yes. uh, taking out a, a, a taser, but not even using yes. it, like you have to do a fucking long ass interview and, and I was know, surprised by that as well. I very I I was happy to see how involved it was. No, I was too, but then, you know, obviously I guess those go out the window when you're the NYPD and you're driving through a car through traffic. Yeah. Like how do you get from like you have to do the, a three yeah, hour interview yeah. about taking out a fucking taser. If you have to do a three hour taser, which who know, I don't know how long it is. The point is, it's really. But long. a t taser is a non lethal weapon. You can't say that hitting someone with a car is not is That's non lethal. So how the fuck? And maybe they those guys were, uh, you know, reprimanded. Sounds a little weak for driving a fucking car through a through a crowd of people. I don't know. Well, I, this I, is this is the main complaint that a lot of people have with the police is that there's not a lot of accountability. That well, when yeah. they do something wrong, you usually maybe they'll they'll get suspended, but they'll come back. Or if you if you um, uh, who is the man who was selling loose cigarettes? Who Eric Gardner? Eric Gardner. Garner. Garner. Every, everyone pronounces it wrong. It's Garner. The the cop who killed him ended up in a higher paying position. Well, how about um on Long Island, the NYPD officer who murdered his yes. son this year and is still getting his pension. Well, they well not only that, they the NYPD 
didn't fire him. They let him resign so he gets suspension. I, what is the – explain that to me. What's the thought process behind that? It's if you, What's the thought process behind why, why would you – what benefit is there to, to not as swiftly as humanly possible – I don't know that because out. that's not even like you're defending someone who who did something in the line of duty. Like no. that guy murdered his son in his own home. Yeah, um, I don't know, but that's that's the problem people have is that there there's not a lot of accountability. Well, because the PBA Association is right. they're basically just, I mean, a political party essentially. Yeah. Um I really don't understand what the benefit of that is. I'm trying to think like. You know, I just don't get it. I don't know. Trying to set some kind... Maybe it's like a precedent thing where it's like if we don't do this, then you could take away the pension for other... Sh- I don't know. But, I mean, when you're dealing with murder... Yeah, it, seems it, it, seem, it does. I mean, and... If you want to say maybe let's wait until he's found guilty in a court of law, that's fine. But then shouldn't you but, just delay... But they this? let him resign. I know. That's, yeah. Uh, right. Instead so of delaying anything. Right. Um, I don't know that, that, I mean, Michael that case Valva, is right? that, I don't remember that dirtbag's yeah, name. That's his name, I think. But the guy le- stuck his autistic son in the garage yeah. and let him freeze to death, mm-hmm. basically torturing him to death. Yeah. And that was like, you know, a long line of shit that he did. To yes. Him. You know, that, that night he happened to die, but he, yeah. Hey, listen, rotten hell. I mean. As far as I'm concerned, that's where he's going to end up. So I mean, yeah, he's. I mean, there's no way he's not going to prison. If he doesn't go to prison, it would be fucking insane. Yeah, he's going to go to prison. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I think it's pretty overwhelming. I don't think there's yeah. really any chance. <laughs> I I don't know. I uh, so, Batman White Knight. Um, I want to talk about just like. One of the things that I get that like this is a plot device, but one of the things that I don't like about it is like it's very simplistic uh, kind of view of mental illness Mm. of that the Joker can just take these drugs and then suddenly he's cured of everything, which I, I get that's that was the selling point of the book is we're going to see the Joker go sane, but mental illness is way more complicated than that. And if you take, you know, Joaquin Phoenix Joker, which portrays a very complicated, much more realistic um, depiction of mental illness, you know, most of the time, just the way mentally ill people are portrayed in uh, in general in media, majority of the time, uh, a, a mentally ill person is much more likely to be the victim of a crime than he is the perpetrator. And... The idea of, like, the violent psychopath, it's not only dehumanizing criminals, it's dehumanizing the mentally ill. And I think kind of this idea of just, like, the Batman approach or the renegade cop approach of, like, these people need to be dealt with in the most brutal way possible, you're not treating the real cause of crime and you're not treating the real cause of mental illness. Well, that gets into the whole thing about, like, what's policing really about? You know, is it actually yep. about stopping crime or is it more about, you know, protecting property and capitalism yeah. and slavery? And, you know, that's where that shit, you know. Um, I mean, you have a deep. point. Yeah. I, uh, You know, if you're thinking about it in that way of, like, what is is the goal really to keep us safer? By the way, yeah. Did you notice those the badges that they had in the documentary? Um, the Oakland Police Department badges. Yeah, they I, I identical to the runaway slave patrol badges. I've know people have been pointing that out a lot about how similar police department badges look. That one in like particular. To the old. Yeah. Yes, and that one to particular. If you think that's like, oh my god, I can't believe what you just said, just look it up. Do me. A uh, it, well, it no, it's it's pretty. It's. I'll be honest. I, I I'm new to that. Like, if you I saw something on Twitter, if you, all right. So police departments and sheriffs departments are different. Pre like, uh, maybe the late 1800s. Really, like 
the main law enforcements were like sheriff's departments. Right. A lot of the modern day police departments, specifically in the South, uh, were originally started as runaway uh, slave patrols. And then they became just a way of policing. Um, that, that, and that's why the badges are similar. What percentage of Americans know that? I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that until recently. That's what I'm saying. And like, we're more, way more keyed in than the average American. Yeah. On politics. Yeah. No. Way more. But also, also when they, yes, the Oakland PD, uh, their badge looks a lot like the old runaway slave patrols, but that's really mostly just in the South. Oakland PD was never runaway. Sl- I'm like, just pointing it out. It's, yeah, it's, uh, at the very least, it's it's peculiar. It is peculiar. Uh, I mangled that word. I I yeah. I bring up the sl- runaway slave patrol because, like, factually, that's correct. It's, yeah, but. To then say, like, all modern policing, like, stems from that, that's not really true. You know, most modern policing comes from, you know, we had a sheriff department and that that ended up not being enough, so we created a police department also. Um, the Yeah, the runaway slave patrol thing. I get, like, it's symbolically it's just what they're trying to say. Yeah. And it is, and it is weird, and is. you know. But there's a lot of things about this country that we're starting. And there's a lot of really, weird things yeah. about this country, and there's a lot of weird things, particularly about Long Island. <laughs> um, you know, I this country in general has like a weird underlining evil to it. I've always felt of we we have so much history that's just not talked about. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's the weird part. Like, I I could almost. I don't want to say uh, certainly not justify, but I, you know, you could understand that there's a certain level of barbarism that kind yeah. of just existed in the world. Uh, yeah. You know, when times were and were um, we look at context and like, this is why in my breakdown of this video, I went all the way back to 1966 because right. you have to understand reading this book, everything that led up to it to like truly appreciate it. And you have to understand the, the relationship between poor minority communities and the police. It goes back forever. That you look at one situation, you know, the Black Lives Matter person is saying, um, you know, he he was gunned down in the street and he wasn't doing anything and he and he wasn't doing anything wrong. That's not true. He was doing something wrong. He he was going to attack an officer. But there is an entire history. You know, you put that in the context of the history of brutality that black and brown communities have suffered by police department. You, you put into the context of the runaway slave patrols of like it's specifically in the South, you know, how are you viewing a police department that used to, that comes from a runaway slave patrol that started out as that. Exactly. And well, well, how do you, how do you deal with that history, but also stop, a guy who's running at you with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> it's you, know, a, you can't just it's not um, that's why it's not it's not one or the other. No, you're right and you know what? It it is a more complicated question right. than I originally thought. And sure. watching that documentary did make me uh did make me think about things different. It honestly did. Um because you you're looking at it from both sides. Unless they were of like yes, there is there's a long history, but also this guy's running at me with a with a knife, or you know. Right. Uh, and then you, I don't know. I don't I don't think there's an easy no, solution. There to isn't. It. There isn't. And there and, and, and there's not an easy solution to the fact that like decisions are made in a fucking two second time frame yes it's you, that that is just a combination uh, th- th- that's a that's horrible horrible the idea of um like i've heard the term abolish the police a lot and yeah. to me it's like that's not a that's not a real solution well we, it's not remotely realistic no it's not remote to, it's a waste uh, of the the defund the police where it's really it's not really uh, 
about defunding the police. It's about making sure that. Well, that's because if Democrats are good, if we're if Democrats are good at anything, it's about fucking fucking up the messaging. Yeah, it, it's about making sure other other areas that actually stop crime uh, that it makes sure that the areas that prevent the crime from happening are getting enough funding rather than the areas that are just stopping the crime. Because if you're just stopping the crime and not treating the real solution, then nothing's going to happen. I know, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but then it goes, is the point to have anything fundamentally changed? Yeah, but and that's another if thing. A is prison that industrial complex. We're supposed, we need, need bodies to keep in prison. I mean, people don't want to fucking talk about this shit. Like, no. It's uh, dark shit. We do. We always end up just like shitting on capitalism on this podcast. Well, but also capitalism deserves to be shit on. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's a valid question. Yes, it, it's know, a it's, valid it's question. It's not about, oh my God, fuck capitalism or you guys are hippies. It's not about that. It's, it's a well, fucking question. When like, police officers have a quota of how many arrests they have to make. Right. I mean, you know, okay, here's... here's this this sounds like a weird example, but... Our family has a has a bar in the city, as we've mentioned. And one night we were in there, like I, I worked there at the time, so it might have been three in the morning. And and the pest control guy was in there, mm-hmm. and he was just tuned up, you know. And he said to the bartender something along the lines of, "Oh, you know, the bartenders make a conversation. Oh, how's it going with you know? Did you did you did you get the bugs or whatever?" And he's like, "Yeah, you know, well, it can't you can't kill them all." And he's like, what? He's like, you know, you can't kill them all, otherwise I don't have a job. And it's just like, you know, oh. he said that out loud. And, like, you know, he's a good friend with our uncle, who's who's the owner of the bar. So, like, it was just one of those things where it's like, you know, when you're around drunk people, some, things come out and you're just like... Whoa. Of is it really about... Is this really about getting, is this really about pest control or is this about making long-term profits? Exactly. No, it's a similar uh, concept. America is a weird place. Well, that's how they look at that's how they look at fucking they use it with their own, their own fucking terminology. You know, especially in Trump world where yeah. you're talking about infestations and uh, yeah. you know, I mean, this is not my you know, look this shit up. Like you think I'm fucking talking crazy. No, no. You know. I I got you. Um I it's it's it's, it's Someone just said it the other day. They're they're using like like um, extermin exterminalist. Ex- I can't. Re- it, it's it's certain like phraseology. Yeah. That you know people like Hitler and like Mussolini have used. Right. That gets used. That a lot of the like far right people use that terminology. Yeah. Um. I I do agree. And the documentary and the comic kind of land on the same thing of basically the community has to play a larger role in their own policing. And having community members more involved, uh, it holds a level of accountability. One, it holds a a level of accountability towards when officers do something wrong. And two... Uh, it ensures that we have the right goals of our goal is not to punish criminals or to put a certain amount of people in prison, that our goal is to make the community safer. Um, no, no one wants to live in, you know, no one wants to live with crime run, running rampant. Everybody wants to lower crime. We just see that the way that historically it's been done of we're going to be more brutal on criminals. We're going to take more rights away from criminals. That's not how you stop it. Of course. I agree. Um, all right. We're not, are we going to touch the, the Joe Biden crime bill or we'll leave that alone? I don't know a lot about the Joe Biden crime bill. Should we leave it alone? He just he just got elected president. I'm happy about that, but you know. I'm I'm yeah I know kind of happy. I'm happy Trump lost. I'm not. Joe Biden is fucking. He's terrible. Did you see the cabinet members that the, it's like the CEOs from like Lyft 
and like fucking like Amazon or the transition team rather. It's all fucking corporatist, like fucking just dark. I didn't. Shit. I don't know about. I I didn't know about that. But well, it was announced today. So uh, yeah. I don't. But it is what it is. Fucking whatever. <laughs> I have no hope for the future. I don't fucking care. All so right. Take care of working people, you know? We got to take care of working people. We got to make sure that really everybody that is accountable for all of their actions. We got to make sure that the community plays a larger part in how they are policed. We have to change this notion of what a criminal is Mm -hmm. we have the real we have to change this this dirty hairy bullshit of just like or or this frank miller bullshit of criminals or savages who are beyond the reform and only an idiot would try to make them a functioning part of society that's not true we we talk a small that's such a small minded sociopaths of the world and but we talk about on this channel of just like a lot of our a lot of our conversations are about why people commit crimes mm. you talk about uh you know social problems that are facing a certain ethnic group where they feel like this is their only way of rising up uh you know individual people like uh, you know a paper boy in atlanta who he sells drugs because he he's in a situation where he does not see any other option you know you talk about uh in um the devil all the time of just like the cycle of violence, how like problems from one generation bleed into another violence from one generation bleeds into another. And you can't think of just like they're criminals. They commit crime because they're bad people. There's, there's a history uh, behind everything. There's context behind everything and everything, everything. And Got that's it. the point of the show. Even even if you find yourself in a in a good situation, it's because of context. It's not because you're some special. Oh my God, you're so great. It's like no, maybe you had a stable upbringing. Maybe yeah. you had good friends. Like everything's a fucking consequence. Yeah. And which is why you have to be good to people. As and also as like look at can. I mean you look at Irish Americans. We're a lot of the reason we're in a higher economic, uh, in an uh, economic class than we used to be is because of crime. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Italians too. Italians too, and a, and how, a lot of ethnic you know, we, groups. We talk about this all the time. It's how you try to legitimize your power. Yeah. In the world, and then and then you evolve into. Yeah, into regular a, society. Mm-hmm. Unless you're like a so, and that's where the small, very small percentage of sociopaths are like, yeah, staying in that realm. Most people did it for survival. That most people who commit crimes do it for survival or out of necessity. Um, exactly. All right, Batman, White Knight were movies by McManus. Um, Sean Sean Murphy, he does a lot of really great independent stuff too. Uh, but DC Black Label, you know, he's a good fit for this new, uh, you know, offshoot of of DC that's trying to like tackle more serious topics. Um, all right, uh, for movies by McManus, uh, it's a deep one. Check out, yeah. <laughs> if you want to check out the uh, video format of this podcast, you can check out our YouTube video uh, and. Uh, on our YouTube channel, I also do shorter breakdowns of kind of each topic that we're talking about. Uh, Batman White Knight. Uh, and then also, if you like a documentary that kind of tackles the same things as kind of, I, I call them like companion pieces. You can watch The Force on Netflix from 2017. Very good. Very, Very good. good. Uh, okay. I'm your host, Greg. I'm with my brother, Mike. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening to us. And uh, have a good night.